and welcome back to Otaku no Video. As always, thank you very much for joining me, where today I am talking about the work of anime composer Yoko Kano. Now, you may have heard the name Yoko Kano, uh, and she's done a lot of work. Besides being the chief composer on a number of projects, she also composed the opening and ending themes uh, on for a series including Kagapter Sakura, Razafon, Oban Star Racers, uh, and she also worked as pianist on Jinro, actually. Uh, and she's also worked on a variety of live action films and video games and things like that. But I'm not going to cover that stuff in this. I'm just going to focus on the works in which she was the main composer of the series. Kano got her start actually in video games, starting with a game based on Romance of the Three Kingdoms, which everyone does stuff based on Romance of the Three Kingdoms. This is back in 1985. She also worked on the super popular Nobunaga's Ambition strategy games, actually. Now, one of the problems here lies in dating when Kano does her work, because she gets involved very early on in an anime series. She is normally composing years before the anime is actually released, because she gets in even before some of the characters actually get names, uh, which is actually the way she likes to, to work. So in this, I'm going to talk about when the series was actually released and when her soundtrack was actually released, instead of when she wrote it, because who knows. Now, her first major work was 1994's Please Save My Earth, this was a hugely popular manga, then turned into an anime series. But the weird thing here is that she's not listed on any of the soundtrack uh, CD you know, listings. Uh, but she was certainly um, uh, uh, helping out as pianist for her husband, who was the composer. That was Hajime Mizuguchi. And so she probably was brought on to, um, to, to work as the pianist uh, and then kind of helped him compose the music because she's certainly been working before that, so that's probably what was going on there. But she then went on to compose the music for Macross Plus, the triumphant return of the Macross franchise. And this put her firmly on the map, partly because Macross Plus was wildly popular in America and Japan, uh, but also because the Macross Plus's uh, soundtrack covers a wide range of musical styles, which would be typical for Yoko Kano moving forward. You get uh, traditional classical, kind of, of music in there, traditional soundtrack uh, uh, sort of music, as well as rock and pop, and this sort of s synthesization of various styles for the virtual idol Sharon Apple, who's in Macross Plus. So you get sort of a future pop in there. Her next work involved composing the music for the Magnetic Rose segment of the compilation film Memories by Katsuhiro Otomo. Now this was hard because it is a space opera story, a complete self-contained space opera story told in about half an hour um, that is very much based on opera. Not space opera, actual opera music. So Kano had to compose music that sounded like it came out of an opera, sung by someone who has an operatic voice, and it certainly does that, and it certainly works. The same year saw the release of The Vision of Escaflone, a shoujo story, much like uh, uh, Please Save My Earth is a shoujo story, but this one was done by Sunrise, thus it has giant robots. Being fantasy, Escaflone has big sweeping orchestral music with kind of an operatic feel. Indeed, several of the pieces in there have little operatic chants in them, but overall it is more like a classical symphonic score than you, you, you'd hear in, say, Macross Plus. A year later, Noisman Sound Insect came out. Now, this is an obscure one a lot of folks haven't heard of. Uh, this is a short film by Koji Morimoto. He is the founder of Studio 4C. He directed the Animatrix segment Beyond, the one where the girl finds that glitch in the Matrix. Anyway, this is a 16-minute film that feels like a full 90-minute movie that they just kind of compressed down into 16 minutes. Yoko Kano composes all the music, and it's interesting because the music is weird and sort of techno-like, uh, so very, um, but, but sketchy. It, it feels like this very weird, weird science fiction alternate world kind of, of, and that is the world. And so her music very much reflects that, of being uh, sort of very electronic and very fast, as befits the story. 
For Kano's next work, she would reunite with most of Macross Plus's cast for the soundtrack to Cowboy Bebop, which you've probably heard of. Uh, she wrote a score that encompasses, gosh, jazz, um, future synth pop, opera, a wide range of film scores, because of course Bebop is very film-centered. So the music just bounces all over the place, and um, every piece of music sounds like it comes out of an actual album from that. It's one of the amazing things is that she seemed to be able to just hit a wide range at high quality. And she also composed the music for Be Bebop's uh, film, Knock on Heaven's Door. <laughs> The same year that the Bebop TV series came out, so did Brain Powered, a series by Yoshiyuki Tomino, the creator of Gundam, uh, a mecha series that mm, doesn't have a great reputation. But for this one, Kano composed one of her stranger scores, a very experimental mix that's closer to modern atonal works, especially modern atonal classical pieces, think White of Spring, for example, than anything she's done before or since. Brain Powered is symphonic, but Weird. Next year, 1999, Tomino released Turn A Gundam, his triumphant return to the, to the Gundam universe, and Kano composed all the music for that. Now this has a heavily classical and orchestral feel to it. Big and sweeping, lots of strings and horns. Still somewhat operatic, so a little bit like Escaflone, and probably the closest to Escaflone of all of Kano's works. But Turne is the closest thing to the kind of thing you'd expect to hear in a concert hall of probably any of Kano's works. <laughs> Moving into the 2000s, Kano worked on Earth Girl Arjuna by Shoji Kawamori of Macross fame. Now, this is very new age, um, uh, and so Kano's pieces fit in with that by being uh, very lilting, almost Celtic-inspired music. Again, kind of different, but also still classical strings kind of thing. In 2002 saw the release of Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex, a series for which Kano composed a heavily industrial soundtrack full of rock and electronic pieces, uh, but with a smattering of classical pieces as well. And as with most of her other stuff, she also returned for Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex second gig for a similar soundtrack. <laughs> A year later, she reunited with the cast of Bebop and Macross Plus for Wolf's Reign, a serious science fiction story. The tone here is darker with the melancholy of a Spanish guitar. Uh, and a lot of the pieces are uh, quiet and sad compared to her other soundtracks. Moving on from there, in 2005, we got the Genesis of Aquarion, a super robot series that Kano composed music for. Then in 2007, Darker Than Black. Now here she made a more rock heavy soundtrack, something that is more befitting the action-heavy uh, focus of that series. In 2007, she worked on Genius Party, which is a, another uh, work by Studio 4C, for which she did the, the music for one element of that. In 2008, she reunited with the Macross folks for Macross Frontier. And this is uh, a bit more of a challenge, because this is a 26-episode TV series. So while she also had to, to, um, to do something kind of like Macross Plus, here, all of a sudden, um, there had to be a lot more music, and you have 
two pop idols in it. So a lot more pop music and pop music that had to fit two different styles of pop. So you get a lot of the uh, uh, good symphonic music that fits that, uh, uh, you know, the sort of background music. But because it's a mecha series, a lot of action, there's a lot of big, bold, brassy, um, uh, sort of march style uh, symphonic pieces. But then you get all this pop music as well. And of course it all has to not suck. So that was the challenge for, for Macross Frontier. <laughs> Since then, she's composed the music for Ring of Gundam, a short film, about three minutes long, by Yoshiki Tomino as well. And that's about all we've seen of, of Kano since then, she, although she is planning to be in three projects in 2012, Aquarian Evol, Code Geass Gaiden, and Sakamichi no Apollon, which also brings back uh, the director of Cowboy Bebop, and is apparently a more jazz-focused. So that's it. If you want to give me feedback, please stop by the website at otakunovideo.net. And until next time, Thanks for watching.